Today, we're gonna show you how to use these two equipments, namely function generator and oscilloscope. First off, you'll need to select a probe. For most signals, the simple passive probe included with your scope will work perfectly fine. Next, before connecting it to your scope, set the attenuation on your probe. 10x, the most common attenuation factor, is usually the most well-rounded choice. If you are trying to measure a very low voltage signal though, you may need to use 1x. Connect your probe to the first channel on your scope and turn it on. When the scope boots up, you should see the divisions, scale, and a noisy flat line of a waveform. The screen should also show previously set values for time and volts per division. Ignoring those scales for now, make these adjustments to put your scope into a standard setup. Turn channel 1 on and channel 2 off. Set channel 1 to DC coupling. Set the trigger source to channel 1. No external source or alternate channel triggering. Set the trigger mode to auto. Let's connect the channel up to a meaningful signal. Connect your probe tape to the signal output. As soon as you connect both parts of the probe, you should see a signal begin to dance around your screen. Try fiddling with a horizontal knob to maneuver the waveform around the screen. Rotating the scale knobs clockwise will zoom into your waveform. And counterclockwise zooms out. You can also use a position knob to further locate your waveform. If your rig is still unstable, try rotating the trigger position knob. Make sure the trigger is higher than the tallest peak of your waveform. Try fiddling with those knobs enough to display a single period of your wave on the screen. Or try zooming way out on a time scale to show dozens of squares. To find a real signal, we shall now use a function generator. First off, clasp your ground clip and connect the probe tip to the other probe used on the function generator. The frequency range can be changed by pressing the, these buttons, 1 Hz, 10 Hz, 100 Hz, and so on. Then rotate the knob on the multiplier. In order to choose a waveform, we can use these three functions. Square, sawtooth, and sine wave. Now we will adjust the trigger position knob and the time scale to see clearly the waveform. Many of the experiments in the advanced laboratories make use of oscilloscope and function generator that it is useful to learn their general operation. Both function generators and oscilloscopes are highly sophisticated and technologically mature devices. The oldest forms of them date back to the beginnings of electronic engineering and their modern descendants are often digitally used. Multifunction Devices costing thousands of dollars. 
this collection of exercises is intended to get you started in some of the basics of operating scopes and generators. But it takes a good deal of experience to learn how to operate them well and take full advantage of their capabilities.